in the vast expanse of the cosmos where time and space intertwine, there was only God, eternal, all-powerful, and full of infinite love. From this divine essence, everything was born. The stars, the galaxies, the earth, and all life within it sprang forth from his will. Yet, within this perfect creation, a shadow emerged, a rebellion that would shape the spiritual destiny of all. Today, we journey through the origins of divine encounters, exploring the eternal struggle between good and evil, the profound hope the redemption brings. Before the universe, before time itself, there was God. He existed in a state of perfect harmony, a singular being of limitless power, wisdom, and love. Within him was the source of all life and light, a divine energy that would soon explode into creation. In an act of immeasurable love, God decided to share his glory with others, and so he began to create. The heavens were his first masterpiece, a realm of indescribable beauty and splendor far beyond human comprehension. In this highest heaven, God established his throne, a place where his presence was most fully manifested. Here he created the angels, beings of pure light, each one a reflection of a different aspect of his divine nature. These angels were not mere servants. They were companions in the divine realm, each with a unique purpose. The archangels stood as the highest among them. Michael the warrior, embodied God's justice and strength, defending truth with unmatched ferocity. Gabriel, the messenger, carried God's words across the cosmos, ensuring that his will was known throughout creation. The seraphim, with their six wings and burning passion, encircled God's throne, their voices unceasing in praise, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. Yet, God's creativity did not stop with the spiritual realms. His next act was the creation of the physical universe, a vast expanse of stars, planets, and galaxies. Each celestial body was crafted with precision, a testament to his infinite wisdom. Among these, he shaped the earth, a blue jewel in the darkness of space, a place teeming with life and potential. God's final act of creation on earth was humanity. He created man and woman in his own image, breathing life into them with his divine breath. Unlike the angels, humans were given a unique role in creation. They were to rule over the earth, to be stewards of its resources, and to live in perfect harmony with all that God had made. But more than that, they were created to be in a relationship with God, to know Him, love Him, and reflect His glory in their lives. This perfect order, however, was not destined to last. A shadow was growing, one that would challenge the very foundations of this divine creation. Among the angels, there was one whose brilliance surpassed all others, Lucifer. His name meant light bringer, and he was the most beautiful of all God's creations. His wisdom was unmatched, his power formidable, and his appearance radiant. Lucifer was given great authority and responsibility, but with these gifts came pride. He began to see himself as equal to, if not greater than, God. Lucifer's heart, once pure, became corrupted by his own ambition. He coveted God's throne, desiring to exalt himself above the Almighty. This prideful thought was the first sin, and it festered within him until it gave birth to rebellion. Lucifer, now filled with arrogance, began to spread his discontent among the angels, vincing a third of them to join him in his defiance. The rebellion that followed was catastrophic. The harmony of heaven was shattered as a great war erupted. Michael, the archangel, led the loyal angels in battle against Lucifer and his followers. 
The clash of divine forces shook the very heavens, a cosmic conflict of unimaginable scale. The light of the righteous angels blazed against the darkness of the fallen, each side fighting for the very soul of creation. But no one, not even Lucifer, could stand against the power of God. The rebellion was doomed from the start. Michael, with the authority of God, cast Lucifer and his angels out of heaven. They were hurled down to the earth, banished from the presence of God, and stripped of their former glory. Lucifer, now known as Satan, became the prince of darkness, his beauty twisted into a form of malevolence. This event marked the beginning of evil in the world. The once beautiful earth was now marred by the presence of these fallen beings. Satan and his demons, fueled by hatred and jealousy, sought to corrupt God's creation, to drag humanity into the darkness that had consumed them. The perfect world that God had created was now a battleground, and humanity found itself at the center of this cosmic struggle. Despite the fall, God's love for his creation remained unshaken. He did not abandon the world to the forces of darkness. Instead, he devised a plan to redeem what had been lost. This plan would unfold through history, marked by divine interventions that demonstrated both his power and his mercy. Throughout the ages, God revealed himself in many ways. To Abraham, he appeared as a covenant maker, promising that through his descendants, all nations would be blessed. To Moses, he appeared as a deliverer, parting the Red Sea and leading the Israelites out of bondage in Egypt. To the prophets, he spoke of justice and righteousness, calling his people back to faithfulness and warning them of the consequences of turning away. Each of these acts was a sign of God's unwavering commitment to his creation. He was not content to let humanity fall into the hands of evil. He promised a redeemer, one who would crush the head of the serpent and restore the broken relationship between God and man. In the fullness of time, this promise was fulfilled. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Jesus, fully God and fully man, came to accomplish what no one else could. He came to defeat the power of sin and death. His life was a perfect example of obedience and love. He healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, cast out demons, and even raised the dead. Every miracle was a sign of the kingdom of God breaking into the world, a foretaste of the restoration to come. But the ultimate act of redemption was his sacrifice on the cross. On that dark day, as the sky grew black and the earth shook, Jesus took upon himself the sins of the world. He bore the punishment that was meant for humanity, suffering in our place. Satan and his forces believed they had won, that the Son of God had been defeated, but they were wrong. Jesus' death was not the end. It was the beginning of a new creation. Three days after his crucifixion, Jesus rose from the dead. His resurrection was the definitive victory over Satan, sin, and death. It was the proof that God's power was greater than any force of evil, and it opened the way for humanity to be reconciled to God. Through faith in Jesus Christ, people could now be forgiven, restored, and brought back into the family of God. The resurrection of Jesus was the turning point in the battle between good and evil, but the war is not yet over. The earth remains a battleground where the forces of darkness continue to wage war against the light. Satan, though defeated, is not yet destroyed. He continues to roam the earth seeking to deceive, to corrupt, and to destroy. For humanity, this means living in a world where spiritual warfare is a daily reality. The Bible describes Satan 
as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He uses temptation, lies, and accusations to draw people away from God. He is the master of deception, twisting the truth to ensnare the unwary. But God has not left us defenseless. The Word of God is our sword, a weapon against the lies of the enemy. It is the truth that sets us free, the light that dispels the darkness. Prayer is our shield, a way to call upon the power of God to protect and guide us. The Holy Spirit is our constant companion, empowering us to stand firm in our faith, to resist the devil, and to walk in righteousness. Angels, too, continue to play a vital role in this spiritual battle. Though they are unseen, they are ever-present acting as God's messengers, warriors, and protectors. They fight on our behalf, carrying out God's will and ensuring that His plans are fulfilled. Their presence is a reminder that we are not alone in this fight, that the forces of heaven are on our side. The Bible promises a day when this battle will come to an end a day when God's power will be fully revealed to all creation. This is the day of the Lord, the culmination of history, when the kingdom of God will be established in its fullness. The book of Revelation speaks of a new heaven and a new earth, where there will be no more death, no more sorrow, and no more pain. The former things will have passed away, and all things will be made new. On that day, Satan and his demons will be cast into the lake of fire, forever defeated. They will no longer have any power or influence over God's creation. The people of God, those who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, will dwell with him forever. They will live in perfect harmony with God and with one another, basking in the light of his glory. This final victory is not just a distant hope. It is the reality that we are moving toward. It is the end of the story that began before time itself, a story that has been unfolding throughout history, guided by the hand of the Almighty. It is a story of creation, rebellion, redemption, and ultimate restoration. It is a story that reminds us that there is none like him, the Almighty, who alone is worthy of all praise honor, and glory. As we continue our journey through life, let us remember that we are part of a grand narrative, a story of divine love, of battles fought and won, of redemption and restoration. Though the forces of darkness may still threaten, the victory has already been secured. God's power is supreme, his love unfailing, and his promise of eternal life unshakable. Let us stand firm in our faith, knowing that we are not alone, and that the day of final victory is drawing near.